Welcome to my video on transforming Microbotryomyces yeasts. I'm Julian Lieber. Yeasts in the class Microbotryomyces are commonly found on plant leaves in a variety of other habitats. They are known for use in industrial production of lipids and pigments. The protocol we are using employs Agrobacterium tumefaciens, often used to transform plants, to transfer a piece of DNA to the yeast for genomic integration. The plasmids I am using can be found in the video notes. We are going to begin by filling culture tubes with approximately 6 milliliters of the appropriate media. Label tubes before filling or label with tape later. The agrobacterium, or agro, will be grown in lysogeny broth, LB, in this case with 15 milligrams per liter rifampicin and 50 milligrams per liter canamycin. Pick colonies using a wooden stick or other sterile device and inoculate the broth. The yeasts are grown in yeast potato dextrose broth, which contains 1% yeast extract and 2% each of peptone and dextrose. You can add yeast cells suspended in water, like I'm doing here, or pick colonies from a plate as with the agro. Yeast stores well at 4 degrees C and is viable for at least a few months. Cap your tubes and give them a brief shake before then placing them in the incubator for 48 hours at 28 C and a rotational speed of 225 RPM. After two days of growth, your culture broth will appear turbid with cells. Transfer 1.5 milliliters of broth to 1.5 milliliter microcentrifuge tubes labeled appropriately. Because we need more aggro than yeast, you can use more tubes for the aggro or run the same tubes multiple times while pouring off the cleared broth in between. Why do I have so many cultures? These shots are combined for multiple experiments filmed over a few weeks. These steps are usually okay to do at the bench top because we'll have selective agents in the medium at later stages. However, your reagents may get contaminated, so be careful for later. Centrifuge your tubes at 15,000 times G for one minute. Pour off the supernatant, leaving a cell pellet. Clean off your 1000 microliter pipette with ethanol or bleach before proceeding. Mm -hmm. 
Add one milliliter of sterile water to each cell pellet. Vortex the tubes until the yeast is resuspended. This step is to wash off extra nutrients in the broth to avoid overgrowth during the co culture step. Centrifuge again at the same settings. Pour off the supernatant and return the tubes to the rack. Add 300 microliters of stair water to each of the yeast tubes. Add 300 microliters total to the agro tubes, combining the cell pellet volumes to make a denser suspension. Vortex each tube to resuspend the cells. Next, we are going to measure the OD600 of the cell suspensions. I use a 1 to 20 dilution to do this. Fill 1 centimeter polystyrene cuvettes with 950 microliters of water. Make sure your spectrophotometer has had time to turn on and warm up its lamp. Blank the spectrophotometer with the water-filled cuvette. In that same cuvette, add 50 microliters of cell suspension and pipette up and down to mix. The liquid should be evenly turbid. Measure the OD600 and record for each. Next for the math. Use the equation C1V1 equals C2V2 to determine how much suspension is needed to obtain a suspension at OD600 equals 0.6 and enough volume for all your wells. The agrobacterium is generally used at a higher OD, 2.0 or 6.0, depending upon how much you have. Generally, higher is better. Mm -hmm. 
make the appropriate dilutions by mixing water with your salt suspensions. I usually measure out the water into PCR strips first, then add salt suspension. In a 12 well plate, with each well containing 2 milliliters of induction media, for SB and notes, add 3 to 5 sterilized glass beads measuring 3 millimeters in diameter using sterilized forceps. The beads will help spread cells first, then help resuspend later. Now it's time to set up the co-cultures. I first add water to any wells needed as a no agrobacterium control. I use 50 microliters of each liquid or suspension for these steps. I will then add the agrobacterium followed by the yeast. Because you may have more agro lines or more yeast lines, you can do whichever you have fewer of first to reduce cross-contamination risk. Seal your plate with parafilm, then label. Incubate the plate for three days at 24 to 26 degrees Celsius in a Ziploc bag. This cabinet holds the correct temperature for this step. After three days, remove the plate and add 300 microliters of sterile water to each well. Gently shake the plate to allow the beads to resuspend any adhered growth. Next, we will be plating the co-culture suspension onto selective medium. This is YPDA with chloramphenicol, 34 mg per liter, and G418 at a concentration of 100 mg per, per liter. Add at least three sterile glass beads to each of the plates. Take up to 200 microliters of the cell suspension and transfer to the selective medium. Take care to not damage the agar in the wells.
shake the plates to evenly spread the cells across the surface. Spread the plates out in a biosafety cabinet with lids ajar to allow the suspension to dry. After the plates are dry, dump the glass beads from both the plates and the 12 well co culture plate into dilute bleach for cleaning and reuse. Seal the plates with parafilm hopefully having better luck than me. Move the plates to a 28C incubator. Colonies will appear in two to three days if successful. The construct I am using shows at best after plates are moved to 4C for 1 to 2 days. I am using LSSM Orange, a fluorescent protein visible on a blue light transilluminator with an orange filter. Bright colonies in this case are likely positive transformants, which can then be confirmed with a PCR screen. After restreaking, transformants are extremely apparent here. I hope you find the video helpful. Music credit to Ann Joan. I am Julian Lieber, and thank you for watching.